Hey guys, what is up? I hope you're doing really well. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I make videos about traveling, lifestyle, a bunch of other things, yoga, etc. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how I lived off of $1,000 a month. It was 1,000 euros because I was living in Spain, but roughly $1,000 a month. Yes, it is possible. I did it for almost a year. Actually, it was just about a year and I wasn't even getting paid the last couple months, but it's very possible. I did this when I was teaching English in Spain for a year. I got paid 1,000 euros each month and I happened to live off of that and this is how I did it and I'm going to share with you my little tips and tricks and how I spent my money each month to pay my bills and then also to travel and all of that. So before we begin, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't already. It means the world to me and I also make a lot of very helpful videos. So go ahead and do that and without further ado, let's begin. So let's start off with how I spent my 1,000 euros each month. I was living in Benidorm, Spain. I wasn't living in Madrid or Barcelona, which are a bit more expensive. But Benidorm is a city on the coast. It's like on the eastern coast. I have a lot of videos from Benidorm talking about Benidorm and whatnot. I'll leave some in the description down below and you can get a feel for the place that I was living in. My rent was 250 euros a month. Yes, 250 euros a month. I had two roommates, but our apartment was quite big. We were on, I don't think it was the top floor, but it was like the second to top floor of a high-rise apartment building. Benny Dorm is known for their skyscrapers, so we lived in one. I had my own bathroom. My room was decent size. It was an older building. The furniture was kind of older, but the kitchen was okay. We had a beautiful view of the Mediterranean Sea, which I took full advantage of. I sat on that balcony every single day, edited, did yoga, everything it was so incredible and yeah my rent was 200 euros a month then we paid for wi-fi utilities and all of that it came up to around 230 to 250 euros a month i rounded up so it was actually a little less than 250 euros each month and that was where a bulk of my paycheck went and then for food i went to mercadona usually or fruterias or there were a couple other grocery stores that I would go to. Sometimes I'd go to Carrefour, which was a little farther outside of Benidorm, but I would make the trip if I needed something special or if I would go like on the weekend. But I would typically spend around 150 to 200 euros a month on groceries. And let's remember that in Spain and Europe, they have different laws on growing fruits and vegetables and produce and what kind of chemicals and hormones they can use in their food so a lot of this stuff is basically organic and much better for you than the food and groceries in america and the eggs were fresher and everything was just coming from not as far away so really good quality groceries and also from the fruteria you can get bags of fruits and vegetables for a euro or two so that is a great place to go shopping if you are buying your produce but yeah, barely any money, really good quality groceries, 200 euros a month, and I did not like pinch pennies at the grocery store. I would go, it was like going on a field trip every day. I would go to Mercadona. You can see in my vlogs, I talk about Mercadona all the time, but I would spend around 150 to 250 to 200 euros a month on groceries. Thirdly, my phone bill. So I got a SIM card when I was in Spain. I'll actually show you I have my phone right here I basically collect sim cards and I stick them on the back of my phone case and this isn't because my phone case is falling apart by the way so don't judge me but this is because every time I travel somewhere and I mentioned this in my other videos I just go ahead and buy a sim card for that country because it's way cheaper than data roaming prices now I have um, an international plan but even then so my data like my service does not work everywhere so I prefer to just go ahead and get a SIM card, pay like, it's usually so cheap, like I have one from Peru, Tanzania, 
a couple from Spain. I think one from another country. But anyways, I got my SIM card. You just need your passport. And I pay 10 euros a month. I use Simio. I used a few different carriers in Spain. Like over the years that I lived there, I used Vodafone, which was the most expensive. I used Orange, which was, Simeo is owned by Orange, but Orange is a bit more expensive. But Simeo was 10 euros a month. They had a lot of free deals going on. So I would suggest using that one. There's another one that a lot of people use, which is sometimes cheaper. I can find the name and leave it on the screen. But that is how much I spent for my phone bill. Very good. I got enough data to keep me going. I did have to refill it every now and then. So let's say 10 to 15 euros a month. For transportation, I didn't have a car. I walked basically everywhere. I worked about um, an hour walk away from my apartment so that was a lot and i actually walked for like the first four or five months or maybe even six months without taking the bus there like an hour to work and an hour back every day trust me i lost a lot of weight then i found out i could take the bus and i think the bus cost me around 75 cents her ride but I wouldn't take it every day and I wouldn't take it there and back I would usually take it to school and then walk back to get some exercise and like the walk was really pretty and it wasn't too bad at the end of the day so I would say I'd spend about 25 euros a month on transportation within Benidorm just because I usually walked I never really took taxis or anything either I wasn't paying for any subscriptions, just Apple Music, I think, which was $5 a month because I still had the student plan back then, but I didn't have a Netflix account or Hulu or whatever else. So I didn't have those monthly expenses. Two expenses that I did have, or one came towards the end of my year in Spain, which was my student loans, yay. But I did pay for my car. I was paying for my car um, while I was there because I'm still paying it off. But I came with some savings, so that was coming out of my savings and it wasn't coming out of my 1,000 euros a month. So I wasn't really concerned with that because I knew I had enough money to get me through that year in savings for that. And I also want to mention that I did move to Spain being basically debt free. I didn't have credit card debt. I did have my car payments, but I've been paying those off for a few years, so I'm used to them. Didn't have my student loans to pay off yet. And all of that really did help with being able to survive off of a thousand euros a month. And let me do the math really quick. So including going out to eat and going out and partying and whatever, let me talk about that a bit. So I would say I'd spend about a hundred euros a month on that. But the way I was able to do that was during the week, I didn't go out to eat. I didn't spend money. Like I would only cook at home. On the weekends, a lot of the time I would even cook at home. I would get coffee with my friends or something like that, but in Europe getting a coffee is like a euro fifty and you get like coffee and a pastry and it's amazing. It's so great. Or a beer or a glass of wine is like a euro or fifty cents or twenty five cents. So do the math, getting a glass of wine or a drink in the US is gonna cost you around ten dollars per drink or more with tip and everything. Over there you don't have to tip it's so cheap and there's also these things called menu del dia so it's like eight euros or ten euros and you get a full course like three course meal with an appetizer a main dish a dessert or coffee and a beer or sangria or a glass of wine or something and we would do that on weekends so i would barely spend any money going out to eat and then if we did go out to party or something instead of going and buying all of our drinks at the club or the bar we would get a bottle and pre-game at one of our apartments or wherever we were and that saved us so much money so definitely cook at home drink at home and then enjoy the nightlife of spain and whatnot but you can do that for pretty cheap so yeah including going out rent all my bills and such i spent around 600 euros a month which is really great, left me um, around 400 euros to play with. So I would either spend that on random bills that I had that would come up. Maybe I would spend a little bit more on groceries some months than others. And then I would go traveling. You guys know I love to travel. I travel all the time and probably seen my other vlogs from how I travel on a budget. I couch surf, I stay in hostels, I take blah blah cars, I go to places 
on their off season instead of during the season when the rates are super expensive. So I was able to go to a lot of places when I was in Europe. Also visiting friends, staying with friends in other countries is really helpful. So it's very possible to live a very good life and not be stressed out in Spain on a thousand euros a month. It is a little bit harder to do that in cities like Madrid or Barcelona that are a little bit bigger and more expensive, but it's possible. I have friends that are doing it. I lived in Madrid for a while on, and I was um, studying abroad there. My rent was around 600 euros a month, which is still cheaper, significantly cheaper than in the US. And I was living in Malasana, which is one of the most expensive Erasmus study abroad areas to live in. So you can find rent for a lot cheaper there too. Yeah, I had such an amazing time in Spain. I feel like the lifestyle over there is very different than the US and the mentality and the mentality that I had when I was living there was very different. I've been thinking a lot about it lately actually. And so here in the US, I'm actually earning more money than I was when I was living in Spain, but I feel more stressed out about money while I'm here. I think it's the American mindset and kind of like the societal standards and just how things are here. Also the prices of bills, rents, whatnot are a lot more expensive. So for example, I was paying 25% of my paycheck to rent in Spain. Well, here I'm actually not really paying rent right now because I'm living at home. I was going to move out and get my own apartment because I was starting a new job. But with coronavirus and quarantine and everything, I decided I just stay home my, because my job is here in Austin and I was gonna just get an apartment in Austin. But since there's not really much going on, I decided to stay home and save money in that way. But typical rent here for a one bedroom in the area that I was looking at was going to be around 1500 a month and that is just rent and then I would have to pay my other bills and expenses and utilities whatever else I would be spending about two thousand dollars a month which is a lot higher let's say than for my monthly paycheck so there's a lot of differences between how what the cost of living is here and in Spain so I can make a different video talking about my experience living and working in both countries and how I handled my expenses and my lifestyle and everything in each one. If you guys are interested in that, let me know down below. But I wanna go over a few points before I end this video about a little like disclaimers that, that affected how I lived in Spain and also like how I spent my money and my bills and also tips on my lifestyle that helped me uh, make my 1,000 euros stretch or last me each month. So first off, I mentioned I didn't have debt to begin other than my car payment, which I was paying for through my savings. So that was really helpful. Don't fall into credit card debt. It is probably the worst debt to be in because you have a really high interest rate and you can really get buried in it. So please don't do that. <laughs> Another thing I did was I taught English lessons while I was in Spain. I didn't do this every week and I only had one or two students. So I'd say I earned about 45 to 50 euros a month extra just by teaching English lessons. I would charge around 15 euros for an hour and I would do maybe two to three of these a month. But that 50 euros really um, did come in handy for miscellaneous purchases or bills that I had. One big tip I have is to live very frugally during the week. Cook at home, don't eat out, try and save your money wherever you can. It really does make a difference, especially if you wanna travel on weekends. It's also a lot healthier and the grocery stores, Mercadona is amazing. Also. Leading into my next point, I did not deprive myself at grocery stores. I would let myself get whatever I really wanted. Um, I didn't go crazy, but I wouldn't be like, I have to get the cheapest groceries or like stay under this amount of money because then I would just want to eat out or like I wouldn't feel satiated with the food that I was getting. So I ate really healthy. I had fun with what I was cooking and what I was buying and tried out new things because I was living in Spain. I ate great cheese for cheap and wine and all of that. So that was really helpful. That kind of leads into my next point. If you're gonna go out to eat or out to party more, you should pregame. Get a bottle with your friends, have a few drinks outside or at someone's apartment or place. They actually have a term for this in Spain. It's called botellon and it's when you just take 
a bottle of liquor or like everyone just brings their bottles of liquor or wine because you can drink outside and you just go to the park or the beach or whatever and you just drink and make gin and tonics or drink wine or beer or whatever and you have a botellon it's like a pre-game but outside and it's so much fun and you save a lot of money by doing that so i suggest drink at home don't buy the drinks in the bars unless someone's buying you drinks in the bars then drink that <laughs> Lastly, I want to say that it is completely possible to live off of a thousand euros a month in Spain. It is a little difficult at times, I have to admit, especially if you don't have savings to come with. But if you live frugally, get roommates. I cannot stress that enough. Get roommates, split the costs of utilities, rent, whatever it is. It will really save you in the long run because you might think, oh, like rent's still only 600 euros a month if I get my a one bedroom but then you're only left over with 400 euros a month for everything else and while you might survive off of that you won't be able to travel on weekends and do fun things that you're in Spain like go have fun live life travel explore do whatever or wherever you are this isn't even just for Spain if you're living somewhere else abroad just try and save money on rent so you can spend it elsewhere and have more experiences. But it is possible. I did it in Benidorm and I also did it in Madrid when I was studying abroad. And I had an amazing time. If you have any more questions about living in Spain or budgeting and all of that, let me know in the comments down below. And if you live in Spain or have lived there, I'd love to know as well. I'm going to be making another video on how I found an apartment in Spain and different ways that you can go about that because someone actually multiple people have requested me to do that so I want to help you guys out there because I have done gone through that process two times so I know a few things and I'd love to share my tips and tricks and I'm going to also be making more videos about my personal finances here in the US and how I earn money through different streams of income here in Austin now so maybe that can help you out for my viewers in America or just in general who want to learn how to make some extra side cash through their side hustles. And if you have any other questions, like I said, leave them in the comments. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you haven't to catch all my other videos. Go watch my videos from Spain and all my other stuff on Auxiliars de Conversacion because I have so many videos on that topic. And I think that's all. So I hope you have... An amazing day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!